What's going on in the sports card market these days? We've got some of the answers. Stick around. Hello to all my sports card collector, investor, all the collectibles friends out there that are joining us today. Thanks very much. It's Saturday morning. I just woke up here, grabbed some coffee, pumped up because I got a new retro basketball t-shirt. Let me see if I can show it to you guys. The old school Cavs logo. Love it. I, I'm trying to find more of these types of t-shirts with kind of the, the, the retro logos on them, like the, the Supersonics and stuff like that. Picked up an NBA Jam Larry Bird Craig Elo shirt too the other day. I uh, thought it'd be pretty cool. But um, guys, today we are going to talk about NFTs, NFT sales and how they are affecting sports cards, sports card prices, et cetera. And there's a lot to kind of unravel here. Um, one Before I get started, though, housekeeping note. This is kind of funny. So uh, a guy that I went to college with that I had I had lost contact with over the last maybe year and a few months. We had been in touch. He lives down in Florida um, and just kind of, you know, pandemic hit. Everyone's busy. Everyone's, you know, kind of doing their own thing. I had not talked to him and he reached out to me a couple of days ago. And I had known that his dad had recently retired and had actually, um, not recently, we're talking maybe three or four years back. And what he had done kind of put post-retirement is coming out and, and he's been buying and selling sports card collections and sports memorabilia. And so he recently um, opened up his own store. And I guess that's how he, my buddy found my YouTube channel and he's like, oh my gosh, I got to reconnect with this guy. Um, but anyway, if you are down in the Orlando area, the name of the store is Game of Cards. It's in Oviedo. I think I'm saying that right. Oviedo, Florida, which is kind of a burb of Orlando, uh, but it's in the Google. It's worth a Google. So if you're passing through Orlando, you happen to live in the Orlando area, go check out Game of Cards. The store has been open for maybe two months, but um, he's been he's been buying and selling sports cards for years, but just finally has now has a brick and mortar. So I'm excited for him. Um, you know, we, it's cool that we share that same passion. So it's awesome. But wanted to shout that out. So or, in Orlando, Game of Cards, Oviedo, the city that you'll find in the Google when you search. Also wanted to share a couple of recent pickups. I did put these on my Instagram, um, but I was excited. This is easily my favorite Saints card. If you're new here, I'm a huge New Orleans Saints fan, and I've been really digging, deep diving into Exquisite and National Treasures. And this is one, um, it's, it's obviously, it's Breeze and Marcus Colston. It's 2009 Exquisite, so that's when they won the Super Bowl. And this is number nine out of 10. And then on the back of this, it's a quad. Um, it's a quad signature where you've got um, so you've got Breeze Colson on the front, Michael Pittman and Robert Meacham on the back. So it's quad auto, quad patch. It's pretty sweet. And then the other one I just wanted to show too in that same line, this is first year exquisite, 2005 for football. And it's Barry, obviously Barry Sanders. I think he's the greatest running back of all time. I know Emmett Smith would have something to say. Some of these other guys would have something to say. Uh, but this is the only auto I've got of Barry Sanders. It's 2005 number. It's number 35 out of 35. Um, that one just popped up. Had to pick it up to add it to the collection. And for the for me guys, these aren't you know these aren't short term flips. These are long term holds. I know some people think it's crazy to have long term hold sports cards, but when it's sets like exquisite and national treasures. As I as I can kind of learn uh, the, the 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 sports card world, I'm starting to to really understand the um, the importance of scarcity and the importance of a great set. And then when you throw in Hall of Famers or potential Hall of Famers in that mix, I like how all that looks. So I'm I've been digging into that a little bit more. All right, guys, lots of talk about you know what's happening in the sports card world. Are we crashing? Blah blah blah. Whatever. It's obviously not a, a sports card crash in the sense that, you know, it's, it's not like we're falling off the cliff, like kind of what happened in the 90s, you know, with oversupply. There's a, a, a multitude of factors here, but the one big one that is not talked about enough, I don't think, is the, the, just the reality of NFTs coming onto the market, sports NFTs in particular. I'm not talking about uh, the art stuff. And the art stuff plays a role, of course, but I don't think that the art NFTs are necessarily pulling money from sports card collectors, sports card investors. 
I do think that NBA Top Shot is an example of this. Um, you know, whether or not you're into it or not, I, I am a perfect example of someone that has put money on that platform that otherwise probably would have gone to other collectibles, including sports cards. Now, NBA Top Shot is also dominated a lot by uh, people that are into digital currencies and, and cryptocurrencies that, that are dominating that, that space. You also do have sports collectors and sports card collectors that are mixed in there, but it's not like all of these, it's just not, it's not all sports card people that are in on NBA Top Shot. You also have MLB and NFTs that just recently came out, and that is money that's being pulled away uh, from other aspects of, of this. And look, that's not going to change. You've got UFC, NFTs. I think people are learning more and more about it. Gary V, who's a massive influencer, is dropping his own project on May 5th, NFT project. So whether you like NFTs or don't like NFTs and, and, and whether you're into it or not, totally up to you. This is not a pro NFT, um, you know, video. This is just simply what it is. This is what's going on. Um, you know, whether you're into it or not, the NFT thing, whether this is a long term deal or if it's just a couple of years fad, you know, like some people think it's just a fad and that's fine. Either way, it's here and it's going to be here for the next couple of years at least and maybe for, for the long term. We just don't know. Um, but you have the MLB NFTs that were very popular. You're, the UFC ones probably will be too. And then eventually you're going to have NFL. You're going to have hockey. You know, you're going to have everything else coming down the line. I, I don't see, I don't see that changing. And I think it'll happen too with artists and, you know, music and everything else. I, I think it's going to be a massive deal over the next few years, but, um, you know, a big, also, you know, big excitement over Trevor Lawrence's new NFTs, um, that, that have been selling like hotcakes. He's just one, he's, he's the number one draft pick, of course, a lot of excitement around him, but that's just the beginning. You know, that's the beginning of this. And it's hard to not think that that's not pulling money away from, from sports cards. It just has to be. There's no way that it's not. Um, the other pieces is that sports cards is something where, look, when, when a lot of people got back into this 12 months ago, let's face it, it hasn't been that long. A lot of people got in 12 months ago where you could grade a card for 10 bucks, get it back in 30 days, and then resell it for 5X. You know, that was kind of a simple way of, of easily getting involved in sports cards. Well, a lot of people started doing that. A lot of people got into that, that deal. And now you have, you know, insane demand where PSA is not even open outside of a $300 express uh, submission. And then all the other grading companies are backed up. There's not a lot of options. And then 12 months ago, uh, hobby boxes were what? 10, 10, 15, 20% of the price of what they are now. That's going to have an effect. People, not most people can't buy a $2,000 hobby box or frankly, they shouldn't, you know, with, if you're putting it on a credit card or something like that, um, there's just not the value there. You're not seeing the value out of a $2,000 hobby box that, that you would have out of a $200 hobby box. And look, this is just supply and demand. This is just how the, the markets work. But the, the truth of the matter is just that you have a combination of people can't very easily buy raw grade and sell like they have been over the last eight, you know, 18 months or years for that matter. Now that's all kind of shut down and changed. I do think it's going to, it's going to come back in the sense that I do think it's going to be easier to buy raw grade and sell again. It's just going to be a different landscape because I do think that PSA is going to wretch. They're, they're going to, they're going to get set up. They're getting their infrastructure set up right now. I think it's going to take a full, nine, 12 months to really get the infrastructure set up. But I do think they're going to be a well-oiled machine in time. And I do think that there's going to be opportunities, but it's just that we're going to have to wait for that. And right now, I think there's going to be a, a, a little lull through 2021. Now, look, people will point out, there's still the high-end sales. You still have all these, you know, you still have sports cars are still popular. This is not an anti-sports card video. I'm, if, if you haven't noticed, I, I love sports cards on this channel. I'm in big buying mode. Look, if prices dip, I'll be buying. I mean, and they have dipped and I've been buying. And if they continue to dip, I'll be buying more. So it's not as if this is like, okay, now we're, we're moving over to NFTs. It's just the realities of what it is. The other part of it, fractional ownership companies. There are new platforms that, that are out there to be able to invest in sports cards without having to, you know, necessarily hold that card and do it traditionally. Starstock is still selling uh, sports cards on it, but it is, it's a different way of doing it. And I think that we're going to see kind of new, um, new ways of buying and selling collectibles. And 
in, on this channel, I'd really like to see the advancement of alternative investments in general. Traditional investments, you know, have been around and they're they're great. And I have I have traditional investments, love traditional investments, but I have a lot of fun with alternative investments, especially pop culture collectible collectible type stuff that's scarce. And these platforms give me the ability to to obtain, even if it's a fractional share, it gives me the ability to to get in on it, you know, to to have a shot at it. So. There's a lot of exciting things happening in the world of collectibles and alternative investments and investing in collectibles. How are you guys doing it? How are you? Are you simply sports card people? Strictly, strictly sports card people? Are you sports cards and comic books? Are you into action figures? Are you into starting lineups? The starting lineup people, um, you know, how are, how are you doing it and how do you see yourself doing it moving forward? I'd like to get some feedback in the comments. Um, do you think that you'll change your approach? Are you brand new to this? Are you still kind of learning how you're going to kind of you know, dip your toe in? I want to learn from you all. So definitely leave that in the comments. On a positive note, guys, we made it to the weekend. We're here. Let's make the most of today because let's face it, nothing is guaranteed. There are no guarantees in life. We only get one shot at it, as you know, Gary Vee and many others will, will say. Be happy. You know, choose to be happy. Do something that you love, whether it's sports cards, collectibles, whether it's anything, any sort of hobby. Choose to do that, and it'll be okay. So stick together, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later. Take care.